Alright, we're back on sports, and I hope everyone had a good holiday, and understand someone say this real quick, because during the holiday season, I saw a lot of Philly fans, I don't know how it is in your city, in your state, wherever parts of the world you're from, alright, I don't know how it works for you, but here in Philadelphia, I saw a lot of Philly fans complaining that over the holiday season, that there wasn't enough sports to watch, so they were like, draining right now, and I put like this Philly fans, you have to understand, those athletes, they want to spend time with their families too, so of course, there's not going to be really much on TV, to watch when it comes to sports, okay? So I'll put it like this. The weekend saved a lot of us. It really did. And I understand that you're home with your family, but there's spend time with your family. That's what you do. You don't need to just sit on the couch and watch sports all day. You don't, okay? You can go and do things with your children and things of that nature. Come on, Philly fans, come on. You don't need to watch sports. But like I said, the weekend saved a lot of us. And I want to start off with college football. I just want to have this, this, real, this real opinion real quick on it, okay? Because I put it like this. I don't have a problem with college football during the regular season. But when it comes to this time around the season, the bowl game season, it takes the steam out of me. Why? Because there's too many bowl games. Last, it was over the weekend, we saw one that was like, was it a holiday bowl? Like, anybody who has money can make a bowl, and as long as you have, for those who don't know, for as long as you have six wins, yes, yeah, six wins, you are eligible for a bowl game. That is ridiculous. And this is the thing that kills me, because if you want to keep the integrity of college football going, which I know people are probably laughing right now saying, yeah, integrity, because these bowl games are made simply for money. We know that. I think anybody who watches college football or basketball knows that. But when you see so many bowl games come down the pipe, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. It almost makes you feel like they're saying, hey, anybody can be a winner. You know, you two can be a winner. That's just what it feels like. Six wins. That's, that's ridiculous. I think they need to condense bowl games to make, you know, to, to have that integrity more. But we know there is money to be made, so we know how that's going to go. Now, I do want to move on to the rest of the weekend, because like I said, the weekend saved a lot of sports, guys. And we'll talk about the NFL. We're going to talk, we'll start off with Eagles, Giants. That's right, the bragging rights. I told you last week, this was for bragging rights. This is how you end the season on a high note. This is Broad Street versus Broadway. This is what we needed. Go out and win. Go out and beat the Giants. What happened? The Eagles went out and they beat the Giants. Now, before I get started any further, I want to say that throughout the entire season, we saw trash talking, all right? Giants fans versus Eagles fans, and a lot of it was, you know, light trash talking, and in the end, that was fine. You know, I didn't have a problem with that. And Giants fans, I'm telling you now, since we beat you on Sunday, you know what that means? That means we run New York. That's what it means, okay? So all season, you're going to have to hear, if you're getting in, you know, debates with Eagles fans, you are going to hear to, for the entire rest of the offseason, you're going to hear, well, we swept you. That's what you want to hear. We, we run New York. You came to our house. We beat your heads in. We went over there and we beat you. And you played a good game. You played a hard game, actually, on Sunday. I'll get in that in a minute, all right? But you're going to hear two things, Giants fans. You're going to hear about how we swept you, and you're going to hear about your record. So I'm telling you now, you might as well get used to it all offseason until the next season, all right? Now, I will point this. Giants, they played a good game. Now, for those Eagles fans who don't want to give the Giants, you know, a credibility for that, I will explain. The Giants put up 505 total yards of offense against us, all right? That's good. you got, you got to give them credit on that. Why? Because no wide receiver has, what, had 150 yards receiving since 2000. That was T.O. when he was with, with the 49ers. The Giants yesterday had two receivers who did it. That's right. So, they kept throwing the ball. As you can see, the emergence of Randall, and as we know, Odell Beckham, wait till they get Cruz back. Like I said, Giants fans, I think, are going to be in for a treat, unless there's a chemistry problem next year with their team. But I put it like this, Eagles, it goes to show you that our defense is a problem, all right? And I'm happy that Bl uh, Bradley Fletcher was out, yeah, all right? That's fine, I don't have a problem with that. Everyone wanted that, everyone on Twitter was like, yes, yes, and we were fine with that, even though we gave up a lot of yardage. But if you notice, a lot of these plays that we were getting burned on were slants and straights. I don't know how you get burned on those. Kerry Williams. Let's talk about this again. Kerry Williams. Eli Manning should have had at least two, three interceptions this game. Okay? And he didn't. But I will put it like this. When you are seeing a pass thrown right at you, Kerry Williams, in the end zone, and it's thrown right at you, and you don't catch it, there's a problem. Because that stops... You know, a touchdown or three points. And they got three points out of it because of you, Kerry Williams. You understand that, right? That's something you have to catch. It is a blatant throw right to you. This is why people don't like you. Not because you just don't get burned, but you're not catching anything. Come on, man. You got the focus. But, as we know, in this offseason, we're going to see a lot of moves. I know a lot of Eagles fans are already talking about they want Williams gone. They want Fletcher gone. They want a number of people gone. We also have to look at what's going to happen with Trent Cole and Brandon Graham because his contract is coming up. He may test free agency. We don't know. 
But this is what I mean. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered. And I put it like this. We shouldn't really get that far into it until the offseason or near to the draft. Because if Eagles, I know there's some Eagles fans already that are going to be like, you know what? We should talk about this right now, who we can get. We're going to have every, you know, YouTube jockey and, and Twitter coach on, you know, on there and scout on there trying to figure out what's going on. And then, you know what? I don't have a problem with it, but maybe we should just wait until the season is over. You know what I mean? We we're already seeing a number of things that are happening. Uh, even Giants yesterday, Giants fans were saying, you know what, DRC, what's going on? You know what, let me talk about DRC real quick. Wasn't DRC the same person who mocked us Eagles fans and our organization early this year? So, DRC, let me ask you this, since we're already on the topic, all right? How many wins does your team have against us this year? I want to talk about the offense. I want to talk about one Mark Sanchez again. Yesterday, we saw a number of wide-open receivers that weren't hit. Now, before anyone says event, he did hit Riley Cooper, who was wide open. I'm sorry, but if Riley Cooper is that wide open, you're supposed to hit him. However, there were times that, once again, he put us in trouble with his decisions. In the first one, what happened? He threw to Darren Sproles, who was already covered, when Brent Selleck is wide, I'm sorry, not Selleck, Ertz, is wide open, damn near, what, 5, 10 yards open, with no one around him. Then, at the end of the first half, near the end, when we were down there at their end zone, Sanchez has two receivers open. That's right, one at the bottom, one already in the end zone, with his hand up saying, throw me the ball. What does Sanchez do? He throws it to a guy who's double covered, and it almost turns out to be an interception. Like I've said before, quarterbacks do miss players who are wide open, but top-tier quarterbacks do not make these type of mistakes. This is crazy. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm really hoping that this is the last time I see Mark Sanchez start for the Philadelphia Eagles. I really hope it is. Because this, I just, I can't do this anymore with Mark Sanchez. Y'all saw how I freaked out about it on Twitter, and then some of you were already talking about it, you know, contacting me about it. I can't do this with Mark Sanchez anymore. As far as I'm concerned, sit down. You want to be a backup? Fine, that's what he did. He played the backup role because of Nick Foles was hurt. We know that. I don't have a problem with him being the backup. But starting this many games, we've seen enough of Mark Sanchez. We've seen enough. But Chip Kelly says that he's going to evaluate what goes on with Mark Sanchez throughout the, you know, throughout the offseason, and then they'll make some, you know, make some moves and see what happens. Now, also, Chip Kelly has said that he wants LaShawn McCoy back. Yes, bring him back, please. I don't see why you wouldn't. However... You have to understand that Darren Sproles is also, you know, his first Pro Bowl finally. We should be, you know, we keep Sproles. We keep this type of generating offense going. If Chip Kelly is going to talk about this type of culture in the locker room, then he needs to keep these players for now. All right? There's a couple players that I think can go. Riley Cooper, he can go. Even though he just got that contract, which I felt was way too much money, he can go as far as I'm concerned. He is still, he still cannot get any separation. Other than that wide open pass, he really didn't get any. And we know this. We've seen this time and time. This is not just one game. We've seen this all season from Riley Cooper. So as far as I'm concerned, he can go. He's still a four-string receiver. I understand he's a big body. You want someone out there who can jump and leap. I, I get that. But Jordan Matthews is your guy. That's your big body right there. And he is so, he's shown that he can step up to that, you know, to that level. So it's time that you do that. Also, you can test free agency. You can test the draft. Like I said, there's so many things that we can test and see how it can work as long as Chip has the time to make it work. However, I do want to talk about this, and for those fans of Dallas and Giants and rivalries, and just fans of the NFL in general, when you hear us Eagles fans talk about how bad our media is, I'm going to give you an example right now. of This guy asking Chip Kelly, did we win the wrong games this season? Yeah, the wrong games! Would you say you just won the wrong games this year, or, or what would you say is the reason you're not going to post? Well, I mean, I know we have the same identical record, but no one else, everybody else has a better record. You know, we're not, we won the league at 10 and 6, but I, I don't know what happened in that, that Dallas today. What, they finished 12 and 4 or 11 and 5? Did they win today? So they finished, what, 12 and 4? You know, we didn't win enough games in our, in our division, obviously, uh, to beat that. And I think the two wildcard teams that are going to go are 11 and 5 if they go, depending on what happens in the Detroit Green Bay game, right? And the Cardinals will finish 11 and 5, I think. So we didn't win it. I would say we didn't win enough games. I'm sure that all of us, no matter what team you are a part of, what you know, what you know, loyalty you have towards your team, I'm sure that we can all agree. Everyone is saying, "What do you mean the wrong games? Don't you mean win more games? Isn't that what you mean?" But no, the guy really meant the wrong. You know, you you didn't win the right games. That's what he means. Why you're not in the playoffs? Other teams won more. That's why. That's all it is. We should have won more games, not the right games. 
That is absolutely ridiculous. At this point, it makes me feel as though there's just way too many media guys who, do, who don't know how sports works. That's ridiculous. If your level of competition is getting higher, the Dallas Cowboys raised their level of competition this year. They went higher. Guess what? In order to get to the playoffs, to get to the walker, you have to go higher. It's that simple. This is not like the NFC South. And sorry, I have to bring that up. I, you know, but still, you have to understand that when you're ten and six and you don't make the playoffs, first off, it's a step back for us because we were ten and six last year. Okay, it's a step back. However, when you're ten and six and you don't make the playoffs, that goes to show you your level of competition in that division. For this guy to say that we didn't win the right games, you've got to be kidding me, man. That's ridiculous. I'm, like I said, I'm sure all of us can agree on that one. I'm sure because you, you've got to be kidding me if anyone's going to sit there and say, "No, you didn't win the right games." That that's no. You got to win more games. That's simple. Now, I do want to move on to more football. As we talk about NFC South, as we know, the Panthers just won. They just beat Atlanta. So they win a division. I believe this is two years in a row. Still 7 8 and 1. That's an under 500 record. However, you do have a win streak going. You are going to play, was it? You're going to play against Arizona? I don't see Carolina beating Arizona, to be quite honest. Even with their quarterback, you know, issues. I don't see them beating Arizona. I don't trust Cam Newton right now, especially the fact that he's not throwing enough. He better use his legs some more. That's the only way you're going to keep that, you know, any defense honest with Cam Newton if he's not throwing well. Also, we have, was it, Seattle and uh, Green Bay get their bye. We have Detroit and Dallas. I think that Detroit can win this game if they really focus on their defense. Tony Romo was coming off a hot streak. He beat with the Redskins 44 to, what, 17 or something like that? So you really got to watch Tony Romo. However, Dallas fans... I'm still, I'm still not happy with how your, your players are being treated. And I've said this before. I talked about the injections in his back. All right, Murray, coming off of hand surgery, you know, just not too long ago. It's like, I understand you want to win. I understand Jerry Jones wants to win. But you can't do things like that. You know what I mean? Like, that really worries me about the health of your athletes. And it's not even about winning or losing. It's not about what team you're affiliated with this time. It's about the health of these, of these athletes. That's what it is. However, they're playing well. The Dallas Cowboys look really strong going into this. Detroit fell to Green Bay yesterday, and we saw what happened when Aaron Rodgers went down, and pretty much all of Green Bay held their breath. And Detroit tried to make a fast strike, because that's what they had to do. When Aaron Rodgers came back, it was over. So Detroit, I, I can see you putting up a mean fight against Dallas, but you have to, I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but your defense has to be on point to beat Dallas. All right? That's what you have to. Now, also, like I said, we're going to see we're going to see a number of games in the AFC. We're going to see uh, was it Pittsburgh and Baltimore? Um, I'm taking Pittsburgh because Baltimore is still inconsistent. They still are. I just I, I don't know. Pittsburgh just seems to be a little bit more technically sound right now. Um, I understand Pittsburgh fans still don't like Mike Tomlin. They want him going. Was it previous two years now? Uh, it is what it is right now. Really, I understand that your defense is looking old, but hey, I don't know how you're going to pull this off, but. I think you can beat the Ravens. I really think you can. Cincinnati and the Colts. I think that the Colts can beat Cincinnati simply because Andy Dalton cannot be trusted with the ball during playoff season. That's why. Look at Cincinnati's record during the playoffs. They're still looking for a hungry win. So it goes to show you, like I said, in the Colts, Andrew Luck has shown, even though he throws interceptions in the uh, in the pre in the postseason. I mean, in the, in the postseason, I, I was in the playoffs. You should know that they still have a resiliency about them, even though a lot of people have picked apart their defense. I mean, they pretty much Dallas gave them the blueprint. We actually, when we played them during in the beginning of the season, we gave people the blueprint. So it goes to show you. But I'm going to take the Colts against the Bengals, and as we know, we have um, the was the Patriots and Broncos get the bye. So we will see what happens with that. Is that Green Bay and Seattle get the bye? So I mean, that's that's my picks for this week. Um, other games that happened: KC. We saw what happened with the Chargers. Uh, they almost they almost had a chance to get into it, and then they just blew it. They just did. They blew it. Let's be honest here. But then again, you need certain teams, and we've talked about this before. Once again, I'm sure all us NFL fans can sit and we can talk about this, how you shouldn't have to rely on other teams to lose to get in. We've talked about this. So if that's what you need, I mean, stranger things have happened, but as we know, you shouldn't need that. That, that goes to show you how weak your team has been all season. But for those who don't know, like I said, once again, it was San Diego, Phil Rivers, he had back problems. You know, his receivers were out at one point, so... I mean, he's still dealing with a back problem even when he was playing yesterday, so it goes to show you. You know what I mean? But still, they played, and they had a chance still, and, and they blew it. The Texans look good. I'm, I don't understand how J.J. Watt did not get more of a nod for MVP this year. This guy has, what, 17, 18 sacks, 17 and a half, 18 sacks, something like that? 
He had how many passes deflected? He had how many offensive touchdowns? Was it five? He had how many interceptions? Like, for, for pick sixes? It's, you have to be kidding me. I understand that people want to give to Aaron Rodgers, but J.J. Watt deserves so much more, you know, credit in this MVP race. I said it. Was it uh, midseason? What did I say? I said, J.J. Watt. I said, for you fantasy players, I said, he shouldn't even be put as a defensive player. He should be put as a utility player at this point. So, it, I, I'm shocked that he didn't get more uh, credibility, you know, in, in this MVP race right now. I mean, but everyone's saying Aaron Rodgers, he's the guy. That's it. Because it doesn't move without him, even though Matt Flynn showed that he can play at times. You know what I mean? He's got spots of, you know, consistency. You know, there's spots of consistency, yeah, because <laughs> once he gets going, he's okay, but then there's times where he just falters, and then and that's it. Uh, Cleveland Browns. Let me talk about Cleveland Browns real quick. Disappointing. Cleveland Browns. Uh, Browns fans contacted me about this. It was like, you please talk about this. Uh, as y'all know, Josh Gordon was suspended because he, he didn't, he showed up, you know, he showed up, he missed, uh, what was it, the walkthrough, and then we're finding out that because it was Johnny Manziel, because he threw a party the night before, and a number of players didn't show up on time or they were late, and, and this is because of Manziel. So this is all falling back on Johnny Manziel. Now, look, Cleveland Brown fans, you have to understand, you have to get this kid in control. We have been saying this from the beginning, ever since he was drafted. This is the Johnny Manziel that you have. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There's too much money in my fucking hand. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I know a lot of people say, well, he's young, but this is what I mean. When you're getting that much money... You cannot sit here and say, I'm young, I'm dumb. No, you have to be prepared. And for those who saw what the Cleveland Browns did yesterday, right, when they played Connor Shaw, was it Connor Shaw? He showed just how unprepared Johnny Manziel was when he played. Now also, a lot of you Cleveland Brown fans are saying that during this game, Johnny Manziel was favoring tweets from TMZ, which a lot of people are, are spreading that around now on Twitter, you know, while the game was going on. Shouldn't you be paying attention to the game? So this is what I mean, man. This is exactly what I mean. Like, I understand, like, for us... We're watching the game. You can do all that type of stuff. But when you're a professional athlete with the team and you're watching, you're watching. No, man, you, you can't be doing that. You can't. This is this is what we mean. The Cleveland Browns have to get this under control. If it's if this kid is going to succeed, you can't you can't treat him with your kid gloves. You can't you know sit and say it'll be okay because you're Johnny Manziel. No, you really have to you know rule over him with an iron fist because if you let him just run wild, we can see what's happening right now. Seriously, like I said, I, I wish him success. I hope he gets better. But the way he's acting right now, you're not going to see anything from this kid anytime soon. You're just not. He's just not ready. He's, he's not. Now, I do want to move on. I want to talk about the Oakland Raiders. It's been a tough season for you guys. I'm just going to say that. It's been a tough season. I hope you, I don't know how you fans do it. You're loyal. I just, it, it's crazy to see what you put up with, with all those losses. We saw what happened with Denver yesterday. It, it's, I mean, it's the same thing, the Raiders, you know, Tampa Bay, <laughs> the Jaguars, like, all these teams that have one, two wins, three wins a season, like, I, I just feel bad for them, because as an Eagles fan, you know, it's like, we had, we had a 10-6 and six season, and we are pissed, because we didn't make the playoffs, we saw Carolina get in six, you know, seven, eight, and one, and we're pissed, we're feeling real salty about that, but when you see other teams that just have no chance, and remember Eagles fans, just not too long ago, when Andy Reid was here, we only had a four-win season. Because the players were threatening to punch, you know, fans in the face and carrying on because we want them gone. We're not going to forget that, okay? So understand, I just think you're mad. We have a lot of work to do. But I feel bad for those teams, you know, those fans that put up with that. And you got to think, Tampa Bay just tried to rebrand with the new jerseys and stuff like the new merchandise, and that's just not working well for them. It's, it's not, <laughs> all right? It's absolutely ridiculous to see these type of things happen, you know. But, like I said, you see the loyal fandom, you know, the fandom with it. Also, uh, we're seeing a lot, you know, since I believe this morning, uh, coaches and GMs getting fired left and right. Jets fired Rex Ryan, the GM, all right. The Bears fired their coach and their GM. Atlanta fired, uh, was it, their coach? It, it, it's, it's sad to see this. You know what I mean? Like, people are just getting off. And this is just the beginning. This is just the, the end of the season, the beginning of what's going to happen. The season's not even over. It's just seasons over certain teams, and you still have, you know, free agency draft. We don't know who's going to win Super Bowl. We don't know who's going to get released. The 49ers, they said that they finally came to a mutual, you know, agreement that Jim Harbaugh's going to be gone. He's going to Michigan. He will not be back in the NFL for what we're hearing. The money that Michigan has uh, offered him, we will not see the NFL match that. No way. There's just no way. So the 49ers are now looking for a new coach. I really don't feel as though you should have got rid of him, but whatever. You know what I mean? This guy took you to what? Uh, three NFC championships, one Super Bowl or something like that, and you get rid of them, like, I, I, 
I'm not for that. If the players weren't listening to him, it'd be one thing, but you've got to be kidding me. You had one bad season within, what, four years? So, seriously, like that, about that, right? Four years about that? So, um, yeah, I don't think it was warranted to get rid of Jim Harbaugh. I really don't think it was, but the Michigan money, the money that Michigan's throwing at him, I, what can you do? You know what I mean? That you want to let him go, let him go then. I don't know who you're going to get to replace him, but we'll see what happens because we don't know who's going to get released yet with more coaches. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I do want to move on, all right, to more ridiculousness of sports. And that's right, we're going to talk about basketball. That's right. I want to talk about flopping. I really do. Because we're seeing now off-the-court flops. And no, this is not the Griffin Force flop. Of the week. We've seen a number of these things that have happened not too long ago. We saw, was it over the weekend, we saw LeBron flop against the Magic, and the player got in his face and was like, stop flopping, and they looked like they was going to do something. You know what I mean? Like, people are getting tired of seeing flops. And now we have James Harden, who off-the-court, that's right, what is warm-ups, are flopping. And I want you to pay attention to this, people, because the coach just taps him on his shoulder, and he acts like he was hurt. Obviously, he was in full flop mode. He was. But it doesn't get the Griffin Force flop of the week. Come on, man, he barely touched you. Don't tell me, ah, ah, uh, come on, man. I just think he, like, punched you in the arm or something you felt that way because you're not used to taking it, but you gotta be kidding me. This is what, this is what I'm talking about. Full flop mode while the game is going on, so the slightest touch, you're going to react, even if you're not on the court, because you're already, your mindset is set that way. Flopping has to go. It is time, like I said, they, they want to warn people and find people, but as we know throughout the NBA season, when they, you know, when they, you know, put that rule in, we know that they still play favoritism. They're not going to warn certain players because they make too much money. We know this. We've seen this. Not only that, now I play like this. It's time that you start teching players. It's time. Because it's the only way you're going to learn. It's sad that someone can flop so badly and you do nothing about it. And once again, this is what I'm talking about. The Griffin Force flop of the week goes to college basketball. Why? Because now it's going down to them. And you saw, y'all saw last week what happened when the guy, you said he put more effort into the dance than he did the flop. This is even worse because this one doesn't even touch the guy. It's a mile away. It doesn't even touch the guy and he's going to fall anyway. But after a rebound, you know, what is Dakari Johnson supposed to do? Dakari Johnson's supposed to do. He never got hit. Well, like, yeah. Hey, guys, he never like, you've got to be kidding me, man. Like, come on. Stop. Stop this while we're ahead. Because I put it like this, all right? When you're doing that to try and get by, it doesn't make you good. It doesn't, you know, try to put you up on that upper echelon of players. Remember, back in the 90s, guys would get foul hard as hell. And they wouldn't even call anything. Now we got guys flopping, acting to get calls. Are, are you that weak? Because you won't be a great player. You can't even be considered one of the best or the greatest when you're doing something like that. Speaking of people who think they're the greatest... L.A. Lakers, we got to talk. Nick Young. For those who don't know what's been said around the, N uh, the NBA, I was going to say NFL, but around the NBA about Nick Young, Nick Young thinks that he is the greatest three-point shooter. He also thinks that he's the best three-point shooter in the NBA. I want to know what the hell this dude is smoking because he's nowhere near one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA as far as I'm concerned. He's not even the greatest. You've got to be kidding me. Look, I understand that you're going to have this type of confidence about yourself. You're, that's good. You should. But there's a difference between being confident and being cocky. And you know the difference between because, I'll put it like this, what the hell has Nick Young done? Think about the teams he's been with. He was with the Washington Wizards when they weren't anything. He's gone now, so now they're good. He was with the Sixers when they wouldn't do anything, and he was, a, he was horrible with the Sixers. Now he's with the Lakers when the Lakers aren't doing anything. And he's the same Nick Young who started that fight with Kobe Bryant when Kobe Bryant went off that tangent and started cursing people out. This is your player, Lakers fans. I don't understand what's going on, man. Like, I don't get it. This is going to kill team chemistry when you have a guy. You have Kobe Bryant on your team and Nick Young talking about he's the greatest? You serious? Are you serious? Like I said, this, this is something that needs to be taken care of as far as I'm concerned. And first off, that nickname, Swaggy P, just get rid of that altogether. That has to be the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. I can't believe that someone would... No, no, no. It, it, when you have a player who acts that way, it's going to affect your team. It's going to affect team chemistry. It is. It's going to hurt team chemistry badly. You know what? Speaking of team chemistry, I want to talk about the Cavaliers. For those who don't know, the Cavaliers have just not too long ago. ESPN is going nuts. Uh, they lost by what? 25 yesterday to the Pistons? But the Cavaliers have been having some chemistry problems on offense because the players still aren't getting you know along. Especially when Deion Waiters and LeBron James. For those who didn't see what happened, look how Deion Waiters calls for the ball because he's open. And LeBron's like... 
Nah, son, I got this. And watch how frustrated Waiters gets. It seems the Cavs have a lot of growing pains and got a lot of work to do. They do. Because you can't just blow off players like that. you got to constantly keep rotating the ball. You can't keep thinking. And that's how basketball is. You keep rotating and rotating until you find, you know, that open man that's making that cut. You don't just say, nah, nah, I got this. Move out the way. I want ISO because I'm LeBron James. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Because when you isolate yourself like that, someone's going to double down on you. That's how it works. And then you're going to look for the call. And if you don't get the call, then guess what? You're going to start jawing with the ref because that's what LeBron James does. This is a problem. You gotta start dishing the ball and distributing it. Now understand, we've seen in the past LeBron open on the wing like I'm here, and what happened? Kyrie Irving went passing the ball. He's just like, all right, I'm just gonna walk over here. Like it just seems like the frustration is building, and this is something. This is it's still early in the season, so I understand the chemistry still needs to be worked on. But this is also something that may fall apart before it's even you know before it gets better. It depends on the attitude of the players, and that's not just for the Cavs. It's for every team. Chemistry is key. That's why I keep saying, what I said before, Kentucky could beat the Sixers. Chemistry is key when it comes to basketball, all right? But when we're talking about players who think they're great, like LeBron James, and don't get me wrong, he's, he's a great talent. We, we all see, we all know this. I'm, I'm happy that he's calmed down somewhat, you know, this year, as opposed to the other years where he was really cocky about things, which made no sense to me, you know. But we're going to talk about one of the greatest players of all time. That's right. Or should I say the greatest player of all time? It depends on your argument, you know, because a lot of people could say Wilt. A lot of people could say Dr. J. A lot of people could say, you know, a number of names that would say greatest player of all time. But today we're going to talk about Michael Jordan and the impact he still has on people. That's right. For those who don't know, the Jordan 11s came out not too long ago. And sneakerheads already know this. But watch these guys, all right? Watch these guys clown on TV over the new Jordan 11s. Thanks, Kelly. There is an increased police presence outside of the Franklin Park Mall this morning. It's all centered around the release of some new Jordan shoes at Finish Line. 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline is live outside the mall to explain. Mackenzie? Well, good morning to you both. Yeah, hundreds of people here this morning getting these brand new Jordan 11 shoes. They're a limited edition shoe that came out today and they cost around $200. With me now is the new owner of these shoes. I have with me Paul Moses yeah. and his friends. We'll put those back there because I know uh, they were a lot of waiting for these shoes. Oh, yeah. Tell us oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. what it was. What was it like this morning being here compared to what it was like Wednesday? Oh yeah, I got the real story. See, the police came with a better approach. It was more people friendly. See, last Wednesday it was so crazy. I never seen people get shot with with mace balls getting shot 20 times or, or, what 50, it, times. or 50 times. My buddy got his hat shot off. I sure did. You know, last time the, po the police wasn't well prepared for how many people was going to come out for these these wonderful shoes right here. It was total chaos. They, yeah. they, they didn't expect it to be total chaos. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, so what makes these shoes so special, though? Now that we ha you have them, you finally have them, uh, why are you, they so important to let you? Let me tell you a little bit about these shoes. Huh, tell them, you boy. see, you got the icy gum bottles. Ooh. Just lick them. <laughs> yeah, these like a limited edition. These are never coming out again. And Michael, right. Michael oh. Jordan know what he's doing. And he's not lying. All right, well. Who the hell licks their shoe? Who licks shoes? Like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, when I first saw this, it kind of disgusted me because it still runs the stereotype when it comes to black people and Jordans and fighting over Jordans and, and things of that nature. But easily you can tell if you watch the video in full, if you listen to what they're saying, they're clearly clowning the hell out of news people. They clearly are. They're having fun, it seems like. But we've seen this before where people act like this. I've shown on a video before. They act like this, and they're dead serious. They're very serious. Remember the guy was like, ooh, the box is cold. He got, like, chills and everything because the box was cold. And, like, he was dead serious. He wasn't playing around. And I did a, did a video on it. It's like, so it goes to show you that this type of thing with Jordan's, like I said, Jordan still... For those who don't know, he still has not taken any responsibility, or Jordan or Nike or anyone has taken responsibility when they make these limited releases when it comes to people getting actually hurt, you know? And I think even though within all the jokes that are being said in that video, it, it, it's true. It's still true. People are still getting hurt. We still see a lot of violence. We still see people get stuck up and robbed for this type of stuff. This is something that has to be cleaned up. And it seems like Nike or anybody who has these type of limited releases, they do nothing about it. Until there's some serious outrage, and they're like, all right, we're going to stop it here. But then they bring it back. So, I don't know. And we're seeing even more, you know, ridiculous actions for Jordan sneakers. For those who don't know, a guy on Twitter, that's right, started catfishing women for Jordans. My dudes, like, seriously, answer me this, people. Is it that serious? 
It's a really that serious, and you guys start catfishing people for Jordans. Like, you gotta, come on. They're sneakers, man. They're sneakers. That's all it is, they're sneakers. There's no way that you should be doing this to people over some sneakers. You, you gotta be kidding me. It, it's... Uh, catfishing over Jordans! All right, all right, I want to move on. Now, I remember one of you guys had said not too long ago, you know, event, it wouldn't be a sports video without you complaining about referees. And that's usually how this video, these videos go. I, I'll admit it, alright? But every time I do uh, complain about referees, do I not give you proof? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Referees. Horrible refereeing. But, not in football, not in basketball, but in boxing. I want you to pay attention as this guy tells these kids, this is an amateur fight, 16 and 17 years old. He tells these kids, because you know, they fall on the ground, to go to the corner. And before the kid can get to his corner so he can reset, so he can sell, he says fight... He calls fight, and the kid goes off. Now, as you can see, the ref calls the fight when the kid turns around, all right? What he, the ref doesn't see is that the kid turns around to his corner because his shoe is untied. So he wants the corner to tie his shoe so he has his trip over it. However, ref doesn't see it, calls the fight over. That's right. Now, what you don't see is afterwards, because this happened in South Philly. So when I was watching this, you know, because this, this is local fighting. When I saw this, uh, the corners get upset over this because the fight has stopped early. And, of course... You know, it starts to ensue, and the ref has to stop everyone. Both corners are yelling at each other. The one boxer actually goes over to the other corner and gets in the corner's face. And another kid pushes him out the way. But as you can see, the ref tells the kid to go to the opposite corner. Before the kid can get to the opposite corner, he calls fight. The kid runs over there and punches him in the face. And the kid has to defend himself now. So you have no choice. This was bad refereeing as far as I'm concerned. However, I'm not going to blame everything on the ref, because the kid should have been, as you know, protect yourself at all times. No matter if it's a break, the stop, it doesn't matter. Protect yourself at all times. But like I said, it is a kid. These are 16 and 17 year old kids. You cannot tell me that you can get a referee like this. If you want boxing, the, you know, the youth to get stronger, to get more experience, you can't have referees like this out there doing this. This is absolutely ridiculous. That kid shouldn't have lost that fight because he thought he quit. Now, if that kid outboxed him, then yeah, that kid deserves to lose that fight. Which the kid was in those rounds. The kid lost. The one kid lost. That was at the left on the left. He lost the first round. Second round, he came back and dominated. That yeah. So that round was just like you know. You've got to be kidding me if you think that that should uh, that should end the fight that way. It's absolutely wrong. And like I said, we already know about judges. But it goes to show you that we have a lot of local fights here in South Philadelphia. Uh, was it? I believe it's every Tuesday. It happens every Tuesday. Uh, every. Thursday or something like that, so I get a chance to catch him when I can, you know what I mean, but like I said, I'm not going to blame the rest for every fight, alright, because the next fight that happened, this boxer quits, he quits, 22 seconds into the fight, because he's scared, that's right, he's scared to take a punch, watch this go down. Quick one. You know what's, you know what's crazy? <laughs> He wasn't hit with a clean shot. When the one shot he did get hit with wasn't a clean shot. And then he stayed down until the 10 count because he was too scared to get up. What kind of boxing is this? Like, you should know when you're in training. You got, you got, see, this is what really pisses me off, all right? Because when you're training for weeks and weeks and you're putting your body through that sacrifice and you're getting, those, you know, you're getting punched in the face all the time because you're sparring. So you're getting hit. Don't tell me you get to this fight and then you barely get clipped. And then you quit. That's horrible. You are not built for fighting if that's the case. There is no way that you can tell me that you put in all that time, all that work, all that sacrifice, and that's what you're going to do. It's been one thing if you know if you get caught and you go down swinging. Hey, it happens, all right? At least you, you, know, you, you went out on your shield and you just went out swinging and you did what you had to do. But this guy quit. You don't quit 22 seconds into a damn fight.
That is ridiculous. I don't care how big that guy is. And as we know, they're both the same weight. The guy's taller than him, but they're the same weight, so it's a fair fight. Don't tell me that you're going to sit there and quit on that. That is absolutely disgusting. It is. It really pisses me off. As a boxer, it pisses me off so much to see that. Anyways, I do want to move on and talk about UFC that's coming up. Just want to say that uh, we got Cormier and uh, was it Jones coming up? That is coming up this week. Uh, Flyers are still playing, and they're not looking very well. Sixers, should we even talk about them? Philly fans, I know that our season's over with the, the, with the Eagles. I really don't want to hear, I, I know we're going to hear it, so I, I'll, I'll just give you a warning. You're going to hear, well, X amount of days before pitchers and catchers, you know, report. X amount of days before spring, tra uh, spring training. Really? Really? That's, that's what you're going to say? Like the, we see this every year. Every year. Right now, since the Eagles are over, I would say just enjoy the NFL playoffs for what they are. And our only hope now, since the Eagles are out, would be the Flyers. And that's not saying much, because they're not playing very well. They're not. I mean, we have one of the best duos in the NHL when it comes to Voracek and Giroux, but they're not equating the wins. And that's a problem. All right? It really is. I understand that we're getting some points, but when you have Mason who's hurt and he's trying to come back, I believe he's trying to come back, I believe they play tonight, right? He's trying to come back tonight. And um, Emery, who can only do but so much, that defense is still a problem. And why is Braden Coburn still on his team? I don't know who's worse in Philadelphia. Braden Coburn or Bradley Fletcher? Probably Braden Coburn because he's been here so long. But still, that, it's absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, I'm done for the... I'm, I'm done. I, I, I should say for the year. I should because... It's kind of weird saying that because, you know, New Year's is coming up. I hope everyone has a good New Year's. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll say this right now. Party. Have fun. Please be careful because y'all know somehow how this goes on New Year's. Y'all know some of y'all where y'all live. Guys pull out guns and start shooting in the air and carrying on. You know, people get drunk and hit people. We know how this goes. So, go ahead, live life, but please be careful. I will talk to y'all later, y'all. Be safe. Have a good New Year. I'm out.